I have most of the framing together. You see here I had to remove a couple beams and cut the top off just so I could get past the garage door opener. I didn't think about not having enough room lifting it up and getting it over. But you see, all four walls are up. I left a space on the opposite side of the air conditioner for a door. 30, uh, 32 inch wide space. So what I'll do is I'll continue screwing these pieces together and then I'll work on putting the top. Now I had originally planned to use the same dimensions of the floor for the top and just screw it in so I'd have about a seven foot high ceiling. <clears throat> ceiling. But my brother pointed out to me, you know, I might as well just go ahead and build a ceiling on top of the framing I currently have. That way I get an extra about six inches or so. And uh, I don't have to worry about uh, the support of it so much. The, it'll be much sturdier just sitting on top than being suspended from all the other walls. Not like this is a really supporting structure to begin with, but still good building sense. So I still got a few days left putting this together. And uh, let's take a look at getting the insulation in into it and putting the plywood sheets on the outside. I have some of the plywood sheets up. Don't want to put them all because you still got to leave a space open to slide in the boards for the floor. I'm starting to put the insulation in. See here. Now I got R19 unfaced insulation on the roll. That's 15 inches wide. And uh, now you could go with a higher R value. But the trouble is, it'll just be a thicker insulation meant for a thicker depth. And so you actually won't get that value. But for the six inch depth for these two by six boards, the R19 will work just fine. When you put it in, make sure that you kind of fluff it up and don't press it in flat because, again, its R value comes from it being uh, fluffed out in that amount of space, which the R19 wants that six inches of space. So I'm going to continue putting the insulation in the floor, then lay the floor down. Then I'll start on the walls. Um, you notice here on the back that I decided not to go with plywood sheeting on the back side against the garage. And what I'll do, I'll just insulate it with the R19 insulation and then put an extra layer of the styrofoam board on the inside on the uh, the sides of the structure that face the garage walls. So I still got quite a bit of work, still got a roof to put on too. That's gonna be fun. Let's take a look at it when I finally got all these things pieced together. I've got the interior fully insulated. Went in pretty easily. I only had to staple in a couple lengths of it at the top where I had the uh, space just a little too wide. So now it's on to putting the floor in, which I got a couple rolls of just some pre-cut Linoleum you see here, some six by nine foot. Because it's 14 feet long, I also have a uh, strip to bend the seam together. So I'm gonna get the floor in and then put the walls up on the inside of uh, these sheets, the polystyrene. See here, they're one inch. One side has uh, a foil backing, or mylar you'd say, and then the other side is just plain white. 
I'm gonna have the uh, shiny foil side on the inside. It'll reflect the light and uh, make things a little bit easier to see. Um, I'm not actually really sure which direction you're supposed to do it. I think probably you're supposed to have the foil on the inside anyhow, so. All right, let's check back in a few when I got this interior all put together. You can see I have the interior completely covered in the one inch polystyrene board. Now where all these seams are, there's still a little bit of the gap. So what I'm going to do is uh, go over it all at the seams with metal tape and seal it up well. It's sealed up at the floor just because it's pressing up against the linoleum. Uh, if you can tell too, I've got uh, some fender washers with a 1 8 inch hole uh, to support around the screws so the screws don't pop through because the, uh, the foil backing is even weaker than drywall so you got to have something with a little greater surface area. So I'm going to tape this all up and then my next goal is to make a door. I have the interior pretty much done. I'm going to leave a little space here until the glass block guy comes and finishes that work. Then I'll fix that. You see up here I have some LED lighting in now so I can see what I'm doing. And I might just let, leave that on continuously because it is only 20 watts of power. They're each 10 watt units like I use in the basement. Um, I could put a switch in on the side, but for the moment I'm just going to leave it plugged into the surge protector. You see here I have the door constructed just out of uh, another sheet of the half inch plywood and some 2x4 to frame around the outside of, it, outside of it to give it support and something for the hinges to attach. There's some standard hinges. If you're good, you can get it on there by yourself by using a uh, something to space the door off the floor just right and then screw it in. So my next step is to insulate this doorway because if I shut it air is still going to be getting through and the door itself has a little insulation to it. So what I'll do is around the frame I'm going to staple the fiberglass insulation and on the back side of the door, I'm going to staple fiberglass insulation. And then around the insulation, I'm going to staple a layer of the sheet plastic. And that way, it'll keep the uh, fiberglass from getting all nasty and whatnot and getting on me. But when you close the door, then the plastic against itself will act as a gasket and completely shut the room off from any air exchanging out of it. So I'm going to get to that. Then also too, I'm going to wrap the entire outside with the same plastic sheeting. You can see here at the top that I've already got started on the ceiling portion. I'll do the ceiling and then the sides. And then it'll be pretty much as insulated as I can get it. So we're going to finish it up and get it all back together, clean up my garage because it is a mess, and we'll give this thing a test run and see it get down to about 34 degrees. You can see that I have the entire structure except for the door covered on the outside with the sheet plastic. All the way to the end you can see. See where I came right up against the end of the garage door, so maximum amount of space. And there's where the AC is plugged in. And here's my doorway. You see I had two lengths of insulation here that I stapled to the door. Then rolled over some plastic on the edge and secured it to the side. So it's like making furniture or uh, putting the, the pillow structure on a chair. 
see here too. I might have to set it back a little bit too because it's it tore the plastic back some as I was pushing into it. You can see from the inside. Now when I shut it, it'll completely seal all the way around. So the only thing I have left to put on it is a door latch. You can see it's already it's already kind of a tie fit. I gotta hold it in there to keep it in, so I definitely have to get a couple latches. Put one at the top and the bottom. And then there's no way for that cold air to get out. So let's take a look at it running in action. <laughs> 